Hi folks, so it's been a little while since I made a video, apologies for that, I hope you had a good Christmas and Happy New Year and all of that. Uh, the reason that I haven't made any videos particularly recently is that um, last week um, I broke my hand. Uh, so this is one of the uh, perils of course of martial arts, um, of, of many kinds of martial arts, um, but of sword fighting, um, HEMA as well. Um, and it's the first time that I've ever broken any bone in my body actually um, and in 16 years of HEMA, nearly 17 years now um, this is the first time obviously I've broken anything uh, and the first time I've had a serious hand injury um, it's a broken little finger broken uh, quite nastily at the base of the little finger in the old days I'm sure it would have been an amputation job and I wouldn't have been using my right hand again uh, very soon um, and you know this brings up some interesting questions there are lots of uh, first-hand accounts we have about hand injuries uh, in historical periods from use of, using weapons swords and, and bayonets and, and spears and, and other and other weapons um, and hand injuries are probably the most uh, the most common and I'm talking about just bruises here the most common type of injury we get in armed martial arts um, and it seems, looking at the sources, they, you know, forearm and wrist and hand injuries were probably the most common injury in historical combat with weapons as well. Because, of course, it's the appendage which is closest to the opponent. Um, to uh, just talk about my own injury for a moment, it does mean that I will be out of action with my right hand uh, for at least a month, probably, probably about three months. Um, and um, I've got two pieces of stainless steel holding my uh, finger together at the moment. Um, so it does mean in the meantime I will be trying to do things with my left hand. Um, luckily compared to an average person I am actually partially uh, left handed in that I write with my left hand, I use a phone with my left hand and I drink with my left hand but everything else I do with my right hand. So uh, it's an interesting experiment because it means that I can do some training with my left hand and prove my use of my left hand with weapons um, and uh, see, see if I can get good with my left hand at all. If my right hand doesn't fully recover, obviously I will have to permanently transition to using my left hand rather than my right. Um, uh, the injury, had it happen, uh, it was a, a straight direct cut aimed at me as it should have been. Uh, I parried it uh, incorrectly, I was using a sabre, steel sabre, um, and uh, it missed my guard, it missed my blade and it hit my, hit my little finger. The little finger with a sabre guard, uh, just grab a sabre guard here, is pretty much the most vulnerable part of the hand because your upper fingers are protected most by the, the guard on the sword. The little finger has the smallest amount of guard to protect it and that's where I caught the blade right at the base of my finger and it just sheared it straight off. Um, and um, you know, it, uh, as a matter of uh, slight interest to some of you perhaps, it didn't actually hurt an awful lot at the time, although I have to say if, if it had been a real fight with a sharp sword I have no doubt whatsoever that it would have removed my little finger entirely and I probably would have dropped the sword. As it happened, I actually kept holding the sword, even though it broke straight through the finger. However, I don't think I would have been able to defend myself very effectively. Um, I think that my uh, training partner, if we'd been having a real fight, even if they'd just broken my finger rather than cutting it off, I'm fairly sure that they would have killed me very soon afterwards, um, because I wouldn't have been able to use my sword quickly enough to defend myself properly, although I was still holding the weapon. Uh, the only possible um, way I could have defended myself quickly enough to defend myself from being killed or, or wounded would be to switch the weapon into my left hand. Uh, and there are historical accounts of this happening in the middle of a fight. Somebody has their right hand wounded and they quickly swap the weapon over to their left hand. I might uh, read out one of those accounts at some point in a, in a later video. Um, so there we go. Um, lesson to take away from this is always use the best gloves uh, that you can get your hands on, so to speak, pardon the pun. Um, in my case, I made the stupid decision to use um, lighter gloves than I already should have been using, um, and, you know, I paid the price. Um, first time in 16 years, but you're playing the odds unless you use safe training equipment. So uh, don't uh, scrimp on gloves, get the best gloves that are available for what you're doing, and uh, don't uh, think that you're a hero and you can parry everything, because it doesn't matter how good you are, at some point, 
um, an accident will happen and uh, you'll get hit somewhere where you're not protected adequately and, and you'll pay the price and it will put you out of training either for um, weeks or months or possibly permanently. Um, so, use good gloves, okay? And a message to the glove manufacturers out there, we need better gloves. At the moment, we don't really have the right gloves, especially for one-handed sword and uh, swords with enclosed hilts. Um, there are some quite good long sword gloves available now, but we don't really have good gloves or good enough gloves for sabre, uh, back sword, side sword, um, and so on. Okay, so thank you very much.